Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Defence industry insiders and stakeholders flocked to Pretoria last week for this year's Aerospace, Maritime and Defence Conference. Senior journalist Keith Campbell was, of course, there, and he joins me now to tell us what got underway. Welcome, Keith. Keith, tell me, how is the defence industry in South Africa doing overall? Well, the environment is not a good one for the industry at the moment. Um, the defence budget is going to be cut by 5 billion rand during this medium term expenditure framework period. There is a feeling uh, in the defence industry that there is a complete failure not only by the government but by wider society to grasp the importance of the industry for the country's economy and development because the defense the aerospace and defense industry could together represent quite a large chunk of south africa's high technology manufacturing and research and development capability so it's a big chunk of the country's cutting edge manufacturing and it's under a lot of uh, stress because of the continuing cuts uh, in the defense budget. Now, in theory, in fact, the defense budget should be increasing in order to fulfill the uh, objectives of the defense review, which uh, was approved by parliament. Um, last year, if I remember correctly. So the situation, I mean, the, the mood was downbeat uh, and uh, at, at the conference. Uh, it's not a good time for the industry as a whole. And tell me about transformation in the industry. Well, this is, uh, of course, an imperative in all sectors of the South African economy, but in the case of the defence industry, it's also coupled with a very strong need to bring in uh, young blood, uh, young people into the industry, because the uh, it's for some years now, uh, people have been warning that the industry has uh, uh, the, the profile of its... Uh, highly skilled personnel, the engineers, the technologists, the technicians, the scientists, is not only overwhelmingly white and male, it is also uh, overwhelmingly older, to be euphemistic. And this age crunch, as it's sometimes called, is now hitting industry. People are retiring now. and. Uh, in too many cases, they seem to be retiring without replacements. So there is a potential skills crisis facing the industry. So they need to bring in um, young people. And of course, this also is the opportunity for uh, bringing in people uh, who were previously not well represented in the industry, uh, black South Africans, colored South Africans, Indian South Africans, uh, you know, up to now there's kind, been kind of a focus on ownership in terms of transforming ownership of defense companies and now the Department of Defense itself has begun to realize it has not been enough of a focus on transforming the skilled workforce within the industry and that, that's a critical critical f of, uh, feature. It's not merely a political imperative or an ideological imperative. It's a downright practical skills, future development, keep the industry alive imperative. Keith, some local companies seem to be facing certain challenges. What types of opt obstacles do they have to overcome? Well, I think it's necessary to point that you can subdivide the local uh, defense industry into three broad categories. At one extreme, you've got South African companies that are subsidiaries of major international groups. Now, these are South African companies. They've got South African shareholders. They're legally domiciled in South Africa, but the majority uh, shareholding is with a major international group. They tend to be doing very well. Uh, they have, they're plugged into the global groups 
uh, global sales networks, uh, that are patent overwhelmingly on, of, for, uh, on exports for their revenues, and of course with the exchange rate, uh, with Iran being so weak against the major international currencies, this is a big boost. So these companies tend to be doing very well. And then you've got South African-owned companies, uh, which also focus mainly on exports. I think it's generally fair to say that, at the least, they're keeping their heads above water. And some of them are also doing very well indeed. And then you have got the companies that are predominantly dependent on the local market. They are in severe difficulties uh, because of the defense cuts. Uh, the market is uh, evaporating. Now, there are a variety of things, uh, issues, some of which uh, are, are apply to all companies here, uh, but of course the impact is massively greater on those companies which are domestically focused. Uh, Kevin Wickford, uh, the Chief Executive Officer of Arms Corps, in his address to the conference stated he knew that some companies, uh, but he did not identify them, that some companies were close to insolvency. That there were companies that had contracts from Arms Corps but were failing to meet their milestones. And if they don't meet their milestones, Arms Corps can't pay them. Uh, this could be uh, the result of that. Uh, this could be the result of cash flow problems. In some cases, it seems that project management skills are decaying because personnel are retiring. They've reached uh, retirement age and are going. Uh, it may also be, in some cases, that the companies are prioritizing export business even though Arms Corps is the main customer because the export business brings in uh, money in hard currency which helps them keep going. The, um, you see the advantage of, of exports is that in the defense industry, and this is not just in South Africa, uh, it, uh, it can happen uh, in many defense sectors around the world is that you can get an, what they call an export multiplier of up to 28. That is, in the South African context, one round of investment in product development can result in 28 rounds of revenues from exports down the line. So the problems facing industry are the low defense and declining defense budget, the aging and now increasingly rapidly retiring skilled workforce, uh, cash flow problems, uh, and everything that kind of spins off from, from these, these, these fundable, fundamental issues. So it's not a great time for the industry as a whole, though certain parts of the industry are doing well. Thank you, Keith. That's the second section for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.